Okay, uh, thanks for the presentation, Carmen. So, um, in this first more theoretical talk, uh, we are going to talk about bank reconciliation with Gen AI. I guess uh, you all know what Gen AI is, right? We are in an <laughs> AI meeting. Um, Gen AI is just this AI that can create uh, content, right? Uh, whether it's uh, text, speech, uh, images, videos. Uh, but probably uh, many of you don't know what bank reconciliation is. So um, let's start with a brief definition of, of this problem. So, uh, well, my name is Pablo. I work as a data engineer for MBAT. Um, it's a Spanish fintech. Uh, and we've developed a software as a service for finance team for medium and large uh, companies, right? Um, MBAT automates uh, different tasks for this uh, finance team, mainly payments, treasury and debt management, and accounting processes. Right, and today we are going to talk about these accounting processes, specifically um, bank reconciliation. So, um, our customers and any company in the world uh, needs to reconcile their payments and collections in their ERPs. Right, so from the in, on the one hand, w we have bank transactions, and we need to map them with the uh, invoices which come from the, from the ERPs. There are two different data sources, and as you can imagine, this mapping, it's not a classical machine learning problem, um, just because we have two different entities, uh, which can be related one-to-one, end-to-end, or one-to-zero. One-to-zero can be, uh, for example, taxes, or um, salary payments in your companies, right, which don't have an invoice. In your, in your ERP. Some examples for the end-to-end -end can be an invoice that is paid half of it when it's uh, issued and the other half 60 days later or so whenever. And it's really important that what I mentioned about the data structures, right? So we have a lot of information coming from the ERPs in the, in the invoices side. Um, basically, you know who the beneficiary is, you have the document ID, the payment method, but from the other hand, the transactions, it's, or at least the way um, with the PSD2 uh, regulation, you can get that information. You have really few uh, data points. Basically, you have the amount, the date of the transaction, and the description, right? So the problem we face here, as I mentioned, this is not a classic machine learning uh, problem. So we need to find other ways to, to tackle it. Um, so yes, the main problem we have, and the one we solve with Gen AI, it's structuring the few data points we have in the bank transactions, right? So you can imagine in your bank transaction, in the description, you can have a lot of information, but not a structure, right? You can, you can have, for, for example, uh, the beneficiary written down because when you make that payment in your bank uh, web, uh, you you just type it, or you can have the payment method because many banks inform it, and you can also write like type down the document ID, right? But this is just a long text all together, and you cannot uh, infer a simple structure to get all these data points, right? So uh, basically, it's like the problem we face is structuring this data, uh, so we need to use uh, language processing models, right? When I say this, you can uh, think about NER, named entity recognition models, and we could use those, right? And there's actually no need to use LLMs. Uh, but well, there are a couple of problems. The first of it is that this kind of text, it's <coughs> special because it's, it doesn't have a lot of fixed structure. It can depend on the bank, right? So actually, we've tested different uh, pre-trained nerves, uh, but they don't work really well. You need a lot of fine tuning, and you don't achieve uh, really good results. At least we, <laughs> we couldn't achieve really good results uh, with it. Also, uh, I mentioned at the beginning, uh, we are a startup. Uh, 
we've been working for two years and the data team when we started working on this was one person me <laughs> now now it's a bit bigger but uh, we didn't have a lot of team capacity to train an in-house model uh, fine-tuning these NER models and so on and LLMs are basically plug and play I say basically well there's a lot of work behind we've tested a lot of different uh, approaches and um, also like when we started working on this I think it was Q2 last year uh, the solution we we have right now didn't exist, right? We work with Google's PAN tool and like with batch, uh, batch requests to the models, which were, uh, went live like Q3, Q4 last year. So we iterated a lot of different solutions until we, we got um, here. That's the main reason we, we choose an LLM to structure this, this data in the transactions. And I also mentioned we work with uh, Google's PAN tool. Um, there are many reasons. The first of them is that we have all our infrastructure in, in Google Cloud, uh, but the solution could also work with ChatGPT. Actually, we did some proof of concept with it, and it also worked pretty similar. Um, well, <laughs> Google also have a program for startups, and they have credits. Uh, so it's really cheap for us uh, to use PAN2 instead of other models. And the main reason is for compliance, right? So as I mentioned, we have uh, all our infrastructure in Google Cloud, so our data doesn't go out our virtual private cloud, right? It's all within our project. Um, and actually working with uh, financial data, that's super important. Um, so yes, I mentioned that uh, this is not a classic uh, machine learning problem, but also this is not just um, sending the data to Palm and saying, okay, solve these uh, matching transactions to operations for me, right? Uh, there's some work behind, obviously. Um, here are some, some results we had. Well, actually we have. Um, we process about we are close to process 1 million transactions a month. Um, so we need a model which can scale. And obviously, we need to treat that data, right? The model re has a response rate of 90% about. So maybe a transaction doesn't have a description, or we couldn't get it, or, or whatever. So obviously, you shouldn't expect um, a response for, for that prompt. And also, uh, the response can be like uh, really vague, right? So don't have a lot of information which you can which you can process. For example, the what I mentioned about uh, salary payments, right? It can say this is a salary, but you don't get like there's no document ID, uh, an invoice ID, or a beneficiary or whatever. Um, so yes, at the end. You and we are able to enrich, depends on the sector, but 40 to 70% of the transactions we process. Um, going back to our problem, this um, enabled us to improve 50% in the automated accounting we do, right? So we, are, we could improve 50% the automatic matching we do between transactions and operations. And the error rate in this automated accounting went below 0.5%, it's actually uh, super low. Before this, before using Palm, I think it was about 3.5%. So not a big deal, but it's it's huge, right? Going from, from 3 to 0.5. Um, OK, so yes, as I mentioned, well, um, we need a model which can scale. And also, the most important part, going into the details on how we build this solution, um, we need to be able to, uh, to process these responses for about 1 million transactions in a month, right? So imagine asking, I don't know, a simple <laughs> problem I was imagining before. 
um, if you ask ChatGPT or Palm or whatever model, three attributes for different cities in the world, right? So please, ChatGPT, tell me the population, average temperature, and number of sunny days in a year for Madrid. The fair answer, it could be the population in Madrid, it's whatever, the average temperature, this is a long speech. Then you ask the same question with the same format for London, uh, and it says temperature and the data, uh, population and the results and whatever. And you cannot process that data, right? Because it doesn't have a structure. As I mentioned, the problem we had is that we have unstructured data and we want to structure it. So if the response is not a structure, um, we are at the same point. So here comes Langchain. This is your best friend if you're looking to um, prompt engineering uh, jobs. Uh, the official definition, it's what it says in the point one, if you go to Langchain website, it says it's a framework for developing applications powered by language models. Okay. <laughs> Basically, uh, we benefit from it in three key points, points two, three, and four. Um, they have prompt templates, depending on the language model you are using, right? Because you know, if you ask the same question or prompt to different language model, they will respond differently. Uh, so they've already worked in certain templates that work better for each model. They have a lot of tools for data input and output. So what I was mentioning before about the cities, basically you can prepare with LangChain that your response should be a Python array, a Python list. Sorry, you can translate Python to JavaScript, or Go, whatever you prefer, and so on. And the same for input, right? Uh, you can pass uh, to the model, even em embeddings, uh, arrays, dictionaries, files, um, like CSV files or whatever, with Langchain. It's super useful for that. And finally, it has also tools for managing your pipeline, right? So this solution, as I mentioned before, you can get 90% of responses, but you need to treat that data. And at the end, in our case, we got to 40 to 70 data and reach. And because there's a lot of processes behind, and in some cases, you need to call a model twice for the same transaction. So first, it approaches a little bit to the solution or give three or four options, and you do a second call uh, to decide which of the three of them it's, it's the best one. Um, so it has all the tools to create your data pipeline, right? And to call different models, get your data from your database and then store it somewhere else. And this is basically how we productivize a, a solution and how we got to improving 50% of our automated accounting. Langchain also have other different tools to serve this solution as a REST API and whatever you have. We don't use this part, uh, but you can look for the information in their website. They have a bunch of tools. Actually, when we started working with it, the same. They had just like these template things and the data input and output. And the other day, working on the slides, I went into the website and it was like, wow, this is a new different tool. Um, so yes, I think we are on time. Uh, so thank you very much. We have five minutes for Q&A. Thank you.